When working on your flute tone, an understanding of the registers of the flute and how to treat them is so important. Whether you're looking for rich, vibrant low notes, a stable middle register, or delicate high notes, this video will give you some principles and tips on how to achieve that. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Lance. I'm a professional flutist and teacher, and my goal is to inform and inspire your flute practice. In this video, we're going into detail about the registers of the flute. I'm going to start by giving you a brief explanation of the harmonic series as it relates to flute registers. I'm then going to be describing the tools of air velocity, volume, and air pressure, and how to match them to each register of the flute. Finally, I'm going to be troubleshooting some common problems with each of the registers. But before we move on, if you're interested in seeing more flute content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks in advance. So what do flute, trombone, and violin all have in common? The answer is that we all utilize the harmonic series in some way. Having a basic awareness of the harmonic series is crucial to understanding the registers of the flute, low, middle, and high, and how to deal with each of them. So here's a basic explanation of the harmonic series from a flute perspective. When you blow into the flute, you're creating a vibrating column of air. The more fingers you put down, the longer the column becomes, and the lower the pitch. As you play a pitch on the flute, the column of air vibrates simultaneously at its full length and also in halves, thirds, quarters, etc. It's this simultaneous vibration that creates what we call overtones, which give the sound richness and complexity. On the flute, the harmonic series can be demonstrated by fingering a low note, such as low D, and changing the velocity of the air from slower to faster and more pressurized. As you can see in here, I'm able to get multiple pitches from the same fingering simply by changing the velocity of my air. These pitches always come in the same order, starting with the primary note, which is also called the fundamental or the first partial, an octave above, which is called the second partial, and then an octave plus fifth, and so on and so forth. This principle applies to all notes in the first octave of the flute, and I'll just demonstrate a few. If you want to learn more about the harmonic series, I'll be putting a few links in the description of this video, including the classic explanation by Leonard Bernstein. The built-in, preordained universal known as the harmonic series. To define the registers of the flute, low, middle, and high, we're going to start by dividing the range of the flute. And traditionally, that's done in three octaves, with each octave starting on C. However, the mechanics of the flute do not use the harmonic series in such a clean and easy way. Let's start by defining the low register, and we're going to be putting all of those fundamental pitches, the first harmonic partials, into the category of low register. So that's going to include low B if you have one, or low C if that's your lowest note, and then going up more than an octave to C, C sharp, D, and D sharp. Now, these notes are traditionally included in the second octave. However, if you try to play harmonics above these notes, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, you'll find that the harmonics appear in the order octave, octave plus fifth, similar to a low D.
To me, this says that these notes, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, which, like I said, are normally put in the second octave or middle range, should actually be treated more like fundamental low register pitches. This is further evidenced by the fact that it's pretty much impossible to break those notes down. And throughout this video, you're gonna hear me talking about notes breaking upward or breaking downward. And that simply means that when you get set up for a note and you're ready for it to come out, but it either comes out too low or too high, I'll say it broke downward or it broke upward. For those of you who have been playing for a long time, how does it change your practice if you start thinking about C, C sharp, D, and D sharp, not as middle register notes, but as low register fundamental pitches. At any rate, it's important to acknowledge that D sharp and E, although they are neighbor pitches, behave in very different ways because D sharp is a fundamental and E is the second partial and thus the beginning of the middle register. The middle register of the flute, consisting all of second partials, runs from E to C sharp and uses all the same fingerings as the octave below. The differentiation between the two octaves comes only from the velocity of the air that you use to get these notes to come out. And we'll have more on how to be able to do that later in this video. Finally, the high register from D and above uses fingerings to stabilize and strengthen the upper partials and to help them play more in tune. And this is why there are so many awkward cross fingerings in the upper range of the flute. Before we discuss how to deal with each register of the flute, let's first talk about air velocity, air volume, and air pressure, which are our primary tools for helping each register to speak cleanly. To demonstrate air velocity, let's start by doing a quick exercise. I'm gonna ask you to exhale and start by exhaling a slow, warm air. Imagine like you're trying to fog up a pane of glass. As you exhale, Gradually increase your airspeed to the point where at the end you might feel like you're trying to blow all the way clear across the room. I'm going to demonstrate how that looks for me. As my air sped up, I was definitely releasing more volume of air. However, what if I wanted to release a large volume of slow air? In this case, let's go back to our analogy of the pane of glass. Maybe it's going to be a car window or an airplane window. For a small volume of slow air, we're going to think about fogging up a very small section of the window. And to create more volume of slow air, we're going to think now about fogging up the entire window. Tied to both velocity and volume is air pressure. There are three ways that we can manipulate air pressure on the flute. The first is the size of the aperture or the lip opening. The second is the shape inside of your mouth. And the third is the proximity of your lips to the back wall of the riser, which cuts your airstream. The aperture or lip opening should not be a fixed or static thing, but rather something that you tailor to the register, the volume, and the tone color that you are looking to produce. Think about a power washer nozzle attached to a garden hose. The amount of water that wants to come out of the garden hose is gonna be consistent. However, the power washer forces that water through a smaller space, making it more pressurized. And the same principle can be applied to your lips. Assuming that your airspeed remains constant, closing the lip aperture will force the air through a smaller opening and make it more pressurized. Similarly, the space inside your mouth can greatly contribute to your air pressure. This includes how much space you're holding between your teeth, as well as the shape and position of your tongue and soft palate. Finally, the proximity of your lips to the back wall of the riser can also affect air pressure. And to demonstrate this, let's start by making a medium-sized aperture and blowing a medium speed air out. We're gonna put the palm uh, 
at arm's length about as far away as you can and start blowing and then gradually move the palm in toward the lips and see if you feel any difference in the pressure of the air against your palm. For me, when my palm is farthest away, the air feels more diffuse, and the closer I get, the more pressurized it feels. And the same principle can be applied to your lips and the back wall of the riser. You can manage the proximity of your lips to the riser by simply moving the center of your lips forward or back. Also, the angle that you hold your flute in relationship to your face can greatly affect the proximity of your lips to the riser and thus the air pressure. As an example, if I push the end of the flute away, it creates a little bit more space. If I pull the flute in towards me, it narrows that space just a little bit. Let's now discuss how to apply the principles of air velocity, air volume, and air pressure to the three registers of the flute, starting with the low register. The low register requires slow, voluminous air to create a full and long air column that makes it all the way to the other end of the flute. In order to accommodate the greater volume of air, it's important that the air is not too pressurized. This means that the aperture of the lips should not be too closed, and also there should be a good space between the lips and the back wall of the riser. Keep in mind that the air column is significantly longer for a low B versus a middle B. This means that even though both notes are fundamental pitches and solidly in the low register, in my opinion, they both require slightly different treatment of air. To get that low B to come out, you're going to need a little bit more volume and a little less air pressure than the upper B. In the middle register, since we're aiming for the second partial, it's going to require a little bit quicker and more pressurized air than in the low register. There are a few ways that we can accomplish this. First, simply by blowing quicker air. Second, by pressurizing the air a little bit more by condensing the lip aperture slightly, or perhaps bringing the lips a little bit closer to the back wall of the riser. Often, the most successful expression is a combination of these three techniques. Similar to the low register, high C sharp will require a little bit more air pressure than middle E. Finally, the high register requires the quickest and most pressurized air to make those upper partials speak. Also keep in mind, because the flute is still an imperfect machine, that there are certain notes such as E, F sharp, G sharp, that might need a little extra care and maybe a little bit extra pressure than their neighbor tones. You may have noticed that I haven't said much about core engagement, otherwise known as support. And this might be my hot take from this video, but I don't really think that core engagement is quite as linked to registers on the flute as some of the other factors we've talked about. The core is definitely important to flute playing. However, I think this has a little bit more to do with breathing, as well as the consistency of air over a line and in relation to airspeed. As we've established before, when discussing registers on the flute, airspeed is a very important tool. And let's go back to that exhaling exercise that we did before where we did the slow to the quick air. But this time I want you to pay attention to your core. And I don't want you to do anything intentional with your core, but just feel and see what it does. So again, start with slow air and then over the course of the breath, speed it up to as fast as possible. If you did a good job of speeding your air, you probably felt your core engage and kick into gear because this is a natural and reflexive response. 
engaging your core or supporting just in and of itself or for support's sake doesn't necessarily speed up the air. I can have a maximum engaged core, but also a very slow airspeed. However, if I just think about speeding up my air and do it, blow a faster airspeed, my core will naturally engage to the level that is necessary to sustain that airspeed. Similarly, you don't need to teach your body how to whisper versus how to shout. Is the core more engaged when you shout? Absolutely. However, you just tell your body whisper or shout and it fills in the gaps. So I want to encourage you to allow your body to fill in the gaps a little bit more. Just tell it to blow slower or more quicker air and let the body take care of the details. I'm now going to troubleshoot a few common problems with each of the registers, starting with the low register. If your low notes like to break upwards, as in you're getting the upper harmonics, such as this, and it's really hard to get those lower pitches to come out, that just means that your air velocity or pressure, or maybe both, might be too high. Here are a few solutions. Start by relaxing your air and blowing a bit slower, although being sure to maintain a good volume of air to create a long air column in the flute. Secondly, you can relax and maybe slightly open the lip aperture. Third, make sure that you have a good amount of space between your lips and the back wall of the riser. Finally, make sure you have a good amount of space inside your mouth. I recommend at least a finger's space between your back teeth. Also, that the tongue is not arched and is generally beneath the line of the lips. Sometimes people find it difficult to create a good amount of volume on the low notes, as in they're coming out very softly. If this is the case, start by experimenting and adding a little bit more air volume. If when you do this, the note breaks upward, that means that there is too much pressure to accommodate that volume of air. So release some of the pressure by relaxing the lips, possibly opening the lip aperture just a little bit and making sure that there's a good amount of space between the lips and the back wall of the riser. Conversely, if you add extra volume of air to those low notes but don't hear a significant change, they're still coming out very softly, experiment with pressurizing the air a little bit more. And you can do this by slightly condensing the aperture of the lips and also bringing the lips a little bit closer to the back wall of the riser. The most common problem with the middle register is hitting the wrong harmonic partial, whether it breaks up and is too high or breaks down and is too low. If this happens to you, you're not alone. This is a very tricky thing to do and is one of the most difficult things on the flute in my opinion. And the simple fact is that everyone cracks sometimes. So don't feel too bad about it. However, let's talk about a few solutions about how to make that a little bit better. If your note is breaking up to an upper harmonic partial, for example, if you're trying to get this, and you get, it probably means that your air is either too fast, too pressurized, or a combination of both. In order to make it better, you will need to release some of that pressure, maybe some of the velocity, by either blowing a little bit slower, maybe opening a little bit of space in the lip aperture, opening a little bit of space between the lips and the back wall of the riser, and probably it's gonna be a combination of all of those things. If you undershoot a note and it sounds an octave too low, Often these come as little blips before the note is supposed to start. If this is the case, it just means that you haven't built up the right amount of air speed and pressure. Experiment with blowing slightly quicker air, maybe condensing the lip aperture just a little bit and maybe bringing it just a little bit closer to the back wall of the riser. 
As before, it could be a combination of all of these techniques. If you have the problem that you can only get those high notes to come out when you're blasting and playing fortissimo, come back to the principles of air velocity, volume, and pressure. If all you can do is blast up there, then it's possible that you're using a high velocity of air, but also a very high volume and maybe a slightly lower air pressure. So I would experiment with trying to add a little bit more pressure to the airstream, either by condensing the lip aperture a little bit, bringing it a little bit closer to the back wall of the riser, using a slightly slower air or less volume of air and a more pressurized airstream, seeing if you can condense the airstream to refine it and make it a little bit more pinpointy. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope it's caused you to think about the registers of the flute maybe in a slightly different way. I also hope you've gotten some enjoyment and value out of this video, and if so, please let me know by giving it a like and down in the comments. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for watching.